Hello and welcome to Choices Global, a production of First Assembly of God, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana. And I want to encourage you to invite a friend to view along with you or share the link with your friends and family. In this week's episode, the panelists will be discussing sustainable tourism. And returning to the panel today, it's an all-female panel today, Mrs. Chevron Corbin, finance expert at a global financing institution based in Geneva, Switzerland, Mrs. Kim Stephen, retired Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce for over 25 years. Ms. Aisha Williams, a Natural Resources Management and Biodiversity Conservation Professional and currently the Country Manager in WWF Guyana's office. And joining us is Ms. Carissa Gooding, a Civil Engineer and a Project Manager of the Chetty Jagan International Airport extension project, and Mrs. Hazel Jackman, an entrepreneur, community and women's leader, and women's issues advocate. She has also worked in the airline industry for 18 years, where she gained a wealth of knowledge and experience in the tourism industry. Presently, the owner and CEO of Trinity Travel Network, which collaborates with local travel agents, and tour operators to organize tours for both local and overseas visitors. And as we observe Women's History Month here in the United States, I want to honor all the beautiful ladies on this panel and even Zalisa Rice, who is our language editor, and the women on whose shoulders we stand. Also to all you special women viewing this program today. The theme for International Women's Day 2022 was Break the Bias. And in our different corners of the world, we do so by our mere presence and our determination to make a difference and leave a legacy for other women and girls. Thanks to our presiding bishop, Dr. Messiah, and his lovely wife, Elder Messiah, for their mentorship and empowerment. Welcome, everyone. Today, we will commence a discussion by paying closer attention to what sustainable and ecotourism means and how to differentiate between the two. We would like to explore what measures can be implemented to protect and provide a tourism package that will benefit both the locals or our host communities and our visitors. And so Aisha will invite you to provide, with, provide for us that difference and the, dif um, the definition for ecotourism and sustainable. We tend to inter use them interchangeably, but they're totally different um, systems. So why not start us off today with that um, definition? Sure, thank you, Felicia. Well, I'll start first with sustainable tourism. According to the UN World Tourism Organization, Sustainable tourism takes into consideration all aspects of sustainability, accounting fully for and finding a balance among economic, social, sociocultural, and environmental aspects, currently and in the future, addressing the needs of visitors, industry, the industry, the environment, and host communities and, and countries also. So let me share a bit with you a few of the elements of sustainable tourism. It minimizes negative social, cultural, economic, and environmental impacts. Also generates greater economic benefits and enhances the well-being of host communities and ensuring fair distribution of benefits. It also improves working conditions and access to industry. It respects and involves local people in decisions that affect them. It also contributes to the conservation and maintenance of natural heritage and biodiversity, and also preserves cultural heritage. It also provides more enjoyable experiences for tourists through more meaningful interaction of all these elements of their this destination. It, and lastly, it encourages respect and builds local pride and confidence, cultural sensitive sensitivity. So now onto ecotourism. It's actually a form of sustainable tourism. That's why maybe people use it interchangeably like that. The Cape Town Declaration, which I like, that 
that um, defined tourism in 2002 indicates that ecotourism is environmentally responsible travel and visitation to relatively undisturbed natural areas. So you hear the difference and why it's a subset? In order to enjoy, study, appreciate, and appreciate nature and any accompanying cultural features, both past and present, that promotes conservation. It also has low visitor impact and provides for beneficial active socioeconomic involvement of local populations. You see the difference. The sustainable tourism is that overarching umbrella for so many different types of tourism, ecotourism, community-based tourism, and, and so many other research tourism. So, so I hope that's clear enough for you. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. So in light of that definition, um, Kim, can you, can you um, based on our discussion um, the last time we were here, how can communities enforce sustainable measures to protect the environment? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Aisha, those definitions were quite clear. So in keeping with that, what do we have in place at the moment that would help us to sustain what we have to offer as a tourism product? Um, if you recall, back in 2019, Guyana would have won a series of tourism awards. And just two weeks ago, we won another tourism award. And this was through Rewa, the community of Rewa. Now, what has happened? What has been happening at Rewa? Rewa has been following what is called a green destination standard. This standard is a global sustainable tourism council recognized set of criteria to measure, monitor, and improve the sustainability policy and management of destinations and regions. It covers things like destination management, nature and scenery, environment and climate, culture and tourism, culture and tradition, social well-being, and business and hospitality. The standard offers guidelines for some of those very areas mentioned by Aisha, the conservation of ecosystems, habitats and species, cultural assets such as our sites and traditional architecture, our cultural landscape and archaeological sites and cultural artifacts. It also offers guidelines for the production of our intangible cultural heritage. And I speak here of things like our local traditions, our art, our music, language, and other aspects of local identity and distinctiveness. Again, it offers guidelines on community involvement, just as Aisha said, things that would cause the persons living in the various community to buy in to what, you know, preserving what is there to be offered and so on. Now, that is what happens when they apply that, use that green destination standard as a benchmark. On the policy side, the Guyana Tourism Authority 2018 to 2025 Living Tourism Strategic Action Plan seeks to ensure that there are coordinated efforts to devise and implement policies and tools to promote and monitor sustainable develop to, uh, tourism in Guyana. The fact that the action plan is a living one and a publicly available document presents an opportunity for persons to explore and come up with innovative suggestions for the continuous improvement of what currently obtains. I would like to close my response saying that the key to our works at practicing sustainable tourism can only be addressed through coordinated efforts working with citizens at all levels and you know we can start from as early as nursery include our indigenities government and civil society the ultimate objective is to guide tourism in a way that achieves the optimal uh, balance of visitation economic impact biodiversity and natural resources conservation and resident quality life. If we do all of this, 
at the end of the day, we will be the place when it comes to preserving what we have. Think about um, Kaichiro National Park and, and Kaichiro National Park is a, one of our protected areas. Now, someone visiting there and take removing uh, or some of our plant life or some insect or something of that sort, and when they leave now, the whole the, the facility the, the facility is affected. We cannot allow things like that to happen. So when we adhere to these international standards, it gives us an opportunity to protect and preserve what we have. On the other side, there is need for education at all levels of society. We must know what we have as Guyanese, and not only us here, Guyanese in the diaspora, so that they can encourage others to visit. We have our beautiful flora and fauna, wildlife that's, that's not seen in other parts of the world and so on. So we have to be able to create programs that will bring this sort of information to all of us. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to jump right in and build on top of what both uh, Kim and Aisha have been reflecting on. And um, what I'd want to share with our listeners is that to my mind, and I've heard it both from Aisha and Kim, sustainability for me is about creating value. And last week or last two weeks, we said that tourism is about authenticity. And Kim mentioned it about preserving our wildlife, preserving our culture and all of that. And this is what I'm hearing about in this charter. And so as we contemplate sustainable tourism and ecotourism, we as a country, Guyana, or any other country that is contemplating this topic, we must understand what we have, our culture, our people, our destinations are of value. And hence, when we negotiate socioeconomic benefits for those local communities, we must never start from what we need someone else to give us, such as the investment to build hotels or to bring airlines to a community or a destination, but understand that we have value and we're the ones giving the value of Kaicho or of, of our protected and virgin forest for exploration and so forth. And so these are the things I'd want to reflect on um what else should we do when we understand value it means that as we negotiate the benefit for a local community when we are selling our craft we will not be bartering for the lowest bidder or price but we will be bartering from a position of strength because they want to come to our destination and so this is the first thing about understanding value the other point i want to make is that sustainability is about preserving that value. And so I love the point that Kim made about the charter because it means when you come into our local communities, you need to be careful of the environment. Internationally, when you purchase a ticket, um, an airline ticket, they're often asking you if you're concerned about the environment, you can pay credits, meaning you pay an extra fee to give back or to help to restore because of the greenhouse gases that are emitted. So if we choose a destination like Kaichor and we have several airlines coming and mind you, they don't all have to come from Timeri, you know, we could be linking with other countries such as Brazil and having the, the, the origin as Brazil and they're coming in and landing wherever we determine but where credits and so forth are charged on airline tickets, we should be in a bargaining seat that those values come to those communities, local communities, where, for example, you can have um, grants that you give to the women so that they can now churn out more economic value in terms of um, producing craft, um, opening little shops that um, produce local food and so forth. Another point that I'd want to make aside from preserving the environment is one that Kurt made also around security. Because if you are going to have sustainable uh, tourism, we do not want persons coming into the communities and actually defacing the culture or defacing the people. And let me be frank, you might have someone coming and they see our lovely um, indigenous women 
and they are attracted in the wrong way. And so it means that um, when we are contemplating or designing our tourism packages, we must think about preserving the communities in terms of security, in terms of culture, and um, as we indicated before, the environment. Um, what are some of the other practical things I want to share on the economic benefits? Oftentimes when we bring tourists in, we feel like we need to step up our, our game, meaning we want to have um, credit card facilities and so forth. And those are important, but we again should never underestimate the value that we already bring. And so when we negotiate with airlines and tour companies as uh, Hazel is running one of um, such a running such a company, we want to ensure that when we are bringing our tourists, we understand that we have the product, we have a value, and so we determine how we will sell, we determine how we will maintain that value by protecting our communities, and we must have a mechanism for monitoring, meaning that if I sign an agreement for hotel services or any other service, and I assess after two or three years, and we do not appreciate um, how the, the the local community is being impacted, we must have clauses to renegotiate and to adapt if we are to ensure that sustainable tourism is what it is meant to be. Thank you very much, Siobhan. And, um, and Kim and Ayesha, um, our previous um, speakers, I believe um, what we you know we can take away from your from what we've heard so far is that education is key to our discussion and as kim stated we can start from our kindergarten students when our children have an appreciation for what we have to offer as um Chevron mentioned um value preserving value we they will be appreciated they grow up within a culture they grow up understanding that what we have to offer is 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 great and awesome and they can now sell that to their peers this is how we can continue to preserve value and um Ayesha, i want us to i would i would like you to talk to us about some practical ways in which communities can become involved in protecting the environment and the natural resources that we offer here in guyana yeah i i believe that um communities and people have to be proud of what they have and especially learn about what they have you know it's you can't you can't be proud of something if you don't understand it if you don't know it and that's an important aspect for the first for the first thing and especially you can't sell it so to speak in tourism it's it's um you offer a product you offer a service and if you don't know what you have and if you don't know your worth you know, then what, what are you offering, right? And you won't value that. So the first thing I think it's important to really understand your biodiversity, learn about what your natural heritage in your community is. Just start around your yard or start around your community. And you may be surprised about what actually exists and inhabits your own backyard and your community and take pride in that, right? Uh, there are positive benefits to communities, health and well-being. And of course, as we're talking about here, the socioeconomic benefits. Also, I would encourage persons to not cause harm to biodiversity and your natural environment. So, for instance, you will find this very strange. Maybe you know, where I live, there are just outside the yard in, in the, the drain we call it. Of course, it's, it's, it's flowing water and it's clean. So there are caimans there. That's their habitat, right? We've just no, no moved habitat in this area. Uh, and so my, my, my first instinct is not to try. So they're not doing anything to me, right? And even if you're afraid, even if you uh, you feel harmed, you know, or you feel like you're in danger, call a professional, call somebody to, to help you and assist you and they can take the appropriate actions. In Guyana, there is a wildlife commission that can assist you and, and others that know how to deal with wildlife. I know in, in especially in the city area and in, along the coast, people are very afraid of wildlife and they see it as their enemy. But this is part of an ecotourism or a community-based tourism product. 
And if you get rid of it, then what, what will you have, right? And also, it, it's important to maintain clean surroundings. This is basic, right? This is very basic, maintaining clean surroundings and having you know um, regular upkeep of their community and volunteering to maintain their community. So having planting plants and other trees in your yard, it could be things that you eat, but this is uh, very conducive for birds. I have lots of birds. I heard Kim in the background, bird was singing in her background. You can find parrots flying around, seed eaters flying around. These, once you have that within your area, within your community, this can encourage biodiversity in your own community. We're living in Guyana, a naturally rich area. And so we, we, we definitely must encourage this kind of um, environment within our communities. Also, um, in communities where they're much more blessed than having natural resources, they can come together um, to maintain and, and, and keep those natural resources intact, right? It's not about utilizing all of it or posing harm to all of it or selling all of it. There are other products and other value you can get out of what you have already as your natural heritage. And so agreeing on rules and actions to preserve and monitor these resources would be benefit to the natural environment, but also to the community. And reducing pollution in the waterways um, and in the general environment so that it, it's conducive for, for people that, that are living there, but also for the biodiversity included in there. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Aisha. I just want to add um, a bit more on the sustainable side. What you should note is that tourism is not like our gold, uh, oil, mineral, other mineral sector. So these are more of extractive industry meaning that tourism has the potential to outlive these sectors and therefore as kim would have mentioned you know our focus should be on ensuring we have those international safety quality and sustainability standards i just want to say in terms of getting tourism better guyana in guyana um from my perspective we should look at three points in terms of collaborating with key stakeholders, ensuring that they work together to create the right environment by prioritizing, you know, critical infrastructure and transportation improvement, even security, quality of security. Secondly, embedding sustainability, where we, um, Chevron would have mentioned value indeed, value and preserving this value from the initial planning stage, um, um, of, of, of developmental projects. And thirdly, ensuring that every Guyanese, through education, different programs that we develop, you know, um, they have a role to play and letting them know that it's either a direct role or an indirect role. So for us to better tourism, we must ensure that we harness, you know, what we have through making our local culture attractive and ensuring um, development capture source. And just for an example, a random example, like take a trip to the Rupununi, you know, creating a safer access, con conducive accommodations, example, BMBs, short for bread and breakfast, you know, huts and etc. Ensuring that our culture is preserved, you know, meaning at least having a, a, a creative looking building you know, with significant artifacts placed inside literature on the various indigenous people, the wildlife within the environment. And these are sustainable things that can be done because it's adding value and it's also ensuring that that value and the benefit is given back to the people within the area or community. Thank you so much, um, Carissa, for those comments. Hazel, as um, in your experiences as an entrepreneur and a women's advocate in Guyana, what are some practical ways women can become involved or maybe are already involved in conserving our cultural heritage, as Chevron mentioned, and creating authentic tourist experiences? Thank you, Celicia. Um, you know, there are so many women involved already in tourism in Guyana and in conserving our cultural heritage. Scores of women in the arts, we have our crafters, we have our orators, we have our writers, we have our artists, 
and we were talking about education. We have those who have produced educational programs to help conserve this rich, diverse culture that we have in Guyana. We have women who are, um, are who are entrepreneurs. They have their their own businesses, they they own resorts, they own their tour operators, their tour guides, their CEOs, their their chefs managing their own restaurants and cafes, roadside food stands, and all of these things. Some even operating out of their kitchens. And this is not only in the city. This is in the regions. I have, the, the little I've traveled, I've seen it happening around in, in the regions I've been to. So women have been contributing in very significant ways to conserving our cultural heritage. And um, really to spur that um, creativity and to help them to, to, to really bring forth or to show forth our diversity in Guyana. You know, um, Guyana is a very diverse place, and I dare say that a fair amount of preservation is going on around our ethnic group, among our ethnic groups. See, when we say it's our holidays and our uh, religious, our religious holidays and and those cultural events, but what I believe and some of mine have come out is how we package these things, how we present them to create that urge, to create that thirst, to create that that um, yearning to come to Guyana, to create these things among our tourists, to come to Guyana. They wanna come to Guyana to see what Guyana has. We had um, Pagwa quite recently, and you know we can package it in such a way that um, persons will want to come to Guyana to celebrate Pagwa with us because we do it in such a, a diverse way and we have such an innovative way in, in celebrating our cultural activities. So all in all, you know, women are already involved. Um, we are contributing so much in, in, in our communities. Um, women are working together to, to, to bring um, economic value to these things and to help to, to create jobs for their fellow women in the community. So yes, women have been contributing a great deal in conserving our culture, but we just need to educate persons more. Um, I like the point Aisha made, how, how can you value um, what you don't know, what you don't understand that you have? You have to know what you have. You have to know your product. You have to know uh, the value of what you have in your community before you can sell it to anyone. Tourism, everybody's business. Preservation and conservation is everybody's business. We have to be more gentle and we have to be more caring for our environment, especially do not litter. That's my take on it. Thank you so much, um, Hazel, for those comments. And those are some practical um, ways in which we can all contribute to uh, a, a ecotourism sector, the sustainable tourism sector. Um, and as we come to the end, I, I would like to go around the table and ask for one minute comments from everyone. But Aisha, we'll start with you. How can we bring visitors and host communities together for mutual benefit of the community and sustainability of the environment? I'm told that it's important for people to know that not every community tourism is suitable for and also community can decide as to what level and to what what sort of product they want to offer they have to sit and decide that right um, and then eventually develop and advertise and offer a product that is genuine um, about their community so that tourists will always have an authentic product and service every time so you don't advertise one thing and they come and they meet something else, right? And that's very important. Consistency is very important. Plan well internally. Make sure you identify and assign roles for, the, you know, different folks who are experts in cooking, who are experts in guiding and understand the biodiversity in the area, who understand the culture. Anyone can be involved, but the, you have to organize yourself. And, and, and also it's important to provide training 
right? Training across the board so they don't go to, a tourist don't go to one person and they have a, 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 you know, a certain service and then they go to another one and it's totally different within the same community. So people have to be, you know, conscious of that. And also it's important in terms of ensuring that this, there, there are benefits for all, equitable benefits. And also pricing is very important. It has to be equitable to whatever service, whatever product is being offered. And so it's not about making as much as you can for the, from this visitor. It's about what you have to offer and what's the fair price for it. Thank you, Ayesha. Closing comments, um, maybe 30 seconds, um, Siobhan, as we wrap up. For me, I would like to say, suggest two things. I have a bag made of coconut that my uh, husband pre presented me when he went to St. Lucia. And why am I talking about this? I'm saying that when the women in the community uh, use the resources, some which are laying waste, meaning the coconut shells, we're throwing them away. But this was polished and made into a bag. And not only was it made into a bag, it was sold at a high price because they understood that when a tourist comes, you relax and you're not on a budget anymore. You're spending to relax and treat yourself, but you are also buying mementos that you can remember. And so I've had that bag for more than 16 years. I still wear it, I still treasure it. And these are some of the other socioeconomic benefits that we women or the women in those local communities can benefit from. Thank you, Siobhan. Carissa, your final thoughts. I just want to stress the importance of just harnessing our rich nature or rich culture. You know, we really need to harness that to provide provide that package, you know, that um, Hazel would have mentioned in terms of that package. It must be of quality and value. So let's just harness, yeah. be able to harness, you know, our culture, rich culture. Thanks. Um, Kim, your closing comments? I would just like to re-emphasize the importance of education, valuing what we have, taking pride in what we have, and the adherence to international standards. It is only by doing those that we can really, I mean, advance in terms of um, sustainable tourism. And let's not forget, whoever, whomever's visiting Guyana should also know about, you know, the guidelines that are in place and so on. So you wouldn't find people coming and defacing our monuments or, you know, taking away things from our cultural sites and so on. So education, value, pride. That's what I would want to leave with us today. Thank you. And Hazel, your final comments. Yes, I will certainly re-emphasize that we must be caring. Tourism is everybody's business. It's every citizen's business. And we must be care of our environment. We must take care of our environment. So our tourists will feel um, at home when they come. They're not coming to a, a dirty place. Littering is a problem. So we need to educate our people and i think even in our regions in all our regions we can network and say listen this is how we'll we'll do this thing in guyana we will just network and we want to have the same kind of of effort being made in all our regions to have a clean environment Thank you so much, ladies. And this is all the time we have for today's program. Remember to join us on April 9th for an, as we continue our discussion on tourism and invite a friend to join you when you view Choices Global. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for your comments. Remember, you can stay in touch with us at faogw.org. And I'm Celicia reminding you to be kind to each other. This is Choices Global. See you soon.